So if uh, you're watching these videos somewhere out there in the world, this is a student demo. And uh, I'm prefacing this video just by saying that so that uh, you can watch it if you want, but we're going to show you the project we put together. And uh, if you want to get the code, you can go to Goes to 11 Summer Boot Camp. And, uh, and then under, let's see, Summer Web Boot Camp, there's 05 Go Lang, and then there's Week 2, and then there's Day 4 of Week 2. And these are the files from lecture this morning when Caleb was giving lecture, but then here are the files we put together with the photo blog. And uh, so our final product so far is right here. And just to kind of show you what it, what it does is if you have a directory and right here we have the folder structure 0605. I haven't pushed that up. I'll push it up to GitHub. But if you have this directory structure and then you have a folder with, uh, you know, assets. And these were in there because originally we were doing the TLS, TSL, TSL, listen and serve TSL but uh, we took that out and so those aren't necessary but you have this folder of assets and inside there you have images and so you have some images and uh, and then when you run this server and I'm just going to look to make sure it's running control C and restart it and I'm in 0605 just make sure that's right and uh, and now we'll look through that folder find all the images and then show the images. I'm just checking to make sure those girls have their tops on. <laughs> For a second, I was like, I, I took that picture when I was in Bali. I hope that that's, that's crowd safe. <laughs> you know, Bali's got the European sentiment. So it'll take the picture, and then it'll look for the GPS coordinates if it has it. And if it doesn't have the GPS coordinates, it puts you on a little island out in the Pacific or Atlantic that Caleb was telling us called Knoll Island, <laughs> where Latin and long are both zero. We don't know where that is. That's just somewhere in the ocean. But if the GPS coordinates are there, it'll map the GPS coordinates and put it up. Here's my dad drinking a beer, and that's out at Knoll Island also. And uh, so we'll show you the code here, and uh, Zap can uh, come up here and talk, first of all, about what this part is doing, the function main. You want to come up and? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, you I, got I, it, Zap. No, I really don't. All right, all right. Well, um, uh, uh, can you show the upload? Did you show that? Oh, the file upload. All right, I don't test that. Let's see. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll go to. We'll, we'll test right now. Go to admin, and my password is you, or my username's you, and my password's me, and submit. So I'm logged in, and it tells me I'm logged in. And if I go back to my normal page, right, it says, hey, you can now log out. And if I'm logged out and I'm at my normal page, then uh, it no longer says logged out. So we use a little bit of conditional logic, which we're just printing there that says, hey, you're not, you're not logged in. And then we are in the else right there. But once you are logged in, it'll get rid of that. And uh, it'll show you, um, it'll show you, hey, log out, and that you are logged in. And then that admin always takes you back to this admin where you can log in again. Not sure what happens if you log in twice. There we go. So now we'll, we'll try to upload a file. And I have one here ready for us to upload. And I called it to upload. And uh, let's see if this has GPS coordinates. I doubt it since it seems like all these files. Uh, so there it was our upload, hopefully. But we could go look and see. Ah, to upload came in. So we should probably program in some kind of logic to show that upload was successful. All right, obviously. And now that's there, and that's also out at Knoll Island. All right. So I'm going to, uh, that's, that's the upload. Um, how should we do this? Take turns? I mean, the first, the first thing was like, I don't know, I, I think about after working with Go is there has to be the HP listen and serve, and then that's going to listen at localhost port 9000. And then I was looking through, we're using the Gorilla deal. I don't know how much detail you guys one. But what's, yeah. What's that? What's that do? Oh yeah, cool. So um, we were looking through the the gorilla for the sessions, gorilla toolkit, and uh, and then a gorilla toolkit. There are the sessions, and so here's the example. And then we were reading about that, and it says uh, important note: if you are you aren't using gorilla mux, which it would be the routing, which we're not using, you need to wrap your handlers with context clear handler or else you'll leak memory. So we just did that. I'm not quite sure what it does, but uh, important note. Okay. Um, 
we added that in. Um, uh, so I've talked enough. Why don't you guys get up here, Nick? <laughs> okay. Um, you gotta say something at least, man. I don't know, I, I really, I, Give your testimonial. <laughs> Go for it. Um, so in Maine, we uh, set the handlers for the different URL paths, um, and each one goes to a different function. The home is this function here, which um, well prints out the. Uh, photos and the, uh, in the template, the Google Maps thing with the custom latitude and longitude um, with the template variables right there. And um, so that just loops through the directory and does that. And the interesting thing is if you just Google, Google map static, you find like an example of how to use static map, which somehow I came across. So that's how we got that. Yeah, if we wanted all the markers on one map or something, we would probably have to get an actual API key. And yeah. we were a few minutes, uh, a few more minutes to do that. Um, and then admin calls admin function. And that um, has a form where um, you submit username and password and stuff, and it creates a session um, and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, it's like, how much detail do we go into? Because this is everything Caleb talked about. Maybe we show the stuff we did that Caleb didn't talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea of the code review. So, uh, oh, yeah. Does anybody see something maybe they think could be done better, or they see something they didn't know you could do and they like it, or just you know, common commentary on the code is basically the idea. Thanks. So, I, I could go where you list the file path block. File path walk. So just to give you an example of what I mean. Was in. Yeah. Right there. So I would probably uh, pull this out of a function or something because it's just, it's a lot of code in one, yeah. uh, one thing. But, I mean, it works. The primary thing that matters is that it works. And with all these, I'm hoping that you see by doing these, these projects that, um, I mean, this is not a small deal that you're able to make this. Very few people in the world are able to build a web app like this, right? And so because it requires a lot of specialized knowledge, and that's what we've been trying to learn. And you can hopefully see that once you, you know, it's hard, it's painful maybe, but you actually can make it, right? It actually does work. You can actually upload a photo and stuff, so. Um, but no, yeah. and that, that's awesome. And I, I think that that speaks volumes that very few people are able to do this, you know, to what we've learned over the last eight weeks, and particularly just the last week and a half. Holy cow, right? A whole language and being able to do this, that's amazing. Uh, but yeah, anybody comment your code? So I think the uh, scroll code, the I think we haven't seen this before. Is this new? Does everybody see what that code's doing? So you don't have to give a name to a type, you can just make one. And so you say var model struct. So you made a model that has those fields, but you never gave the name to the type. You never said made a type called model. So you can do that. Sometimes that's useful. It's useful in this case because he's using it just for the template. And he's not using it anywhere else in the code. So, um, but I mean otherwise I think we saw most of this. That's different from Photo up here yeah. because we created a whole site of photos. We need more and more. That's why we define the type. Yeah, and this took a couple of minutes for us to wrap our minds around. And it, it's been really cool just working together. Like that actually worked really well. Uh, you know, and we took turns coding, and then just like I'd get stuck and just would totally not understand thing. But you know, Nick would be like like this, and then he'd get in there and, and he's like that and did that. And I'm like, oh, that's totally clear. And so that, that was really a nice thing in the process. Oh, um, sorry, this is mostly that now I'm kind of like confused. Like, what is the, the difference between that uh, for two struts? I thought every strut starts with type. Yeah, yeah, so it's the second one starts with bar, bar model. And so what he's done is created sort of, uh, so the first example creates a type. And then he uses the type down here uh -huh. and fills it in and stuff. But the second example, he doesn't actually create the type. He creates a, a variable that has this type.
But the type is no, unnamed. It has no name. It's just a struct. So you can do that. I'm just saying you can do that. People in other languages are not accustomed to being able to do that. Yeah. Just to be able to create that right there. They can do that in Java. So we could have almost just said var current code of struct. It's kind of like saying this is a variable of type struct. And any yeah. uh, anything that you create of type photo uh, is also is of type photo, which is by extension of type struct. Yeah, exactly. Why is it that it's using the struct? If you find that culture confusing, oh, yeah. you can use it the other way. Thanks. Thank you. How was the, the process for you, the team coding? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Zap, want to get on record? I'm good. I, I You're really, good. I really um, Camera shy. <laughs> uh, cool. Yes, yeah, so another thing that I saw a lot of that might be helpful, sometimes I make a routes.go file and just plop the routes in there in an init function. <coughs> if you have the init here. Just because uh, sometimes having all the code in one file can be a little confusing. But um, in other words, you can put these handles in an init, and that'll work too. You could have put them up there. Uh, and then you could put it in a separate file. And then what I would do is make my main go just basically be the listen and serve. And then I make, would save separate files for these guys. But you know, it works either way. It's just it, once the file gets too big, it's kind of hard to remember where everything is. Yeah. Uh, that's something I still need to learn is how to extract because we tried starting extracting but then but then we were like okay we started getting errors like you know this is trying to access something on our page and wasn't yeah. seeing it I don't know if that was just a uh, editor error like not recognizing it or if it would have worked if we compiled it so that's something I could use some more okay all right thanks very much next demo. that's fine